Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. For those who don't know me, my name is Katya. I am an incoming PhD student at Harvard. I have just graduated from Princeton as a math major. In this video, I'm going to break down the PhD admissions process in the United States, and I will specifically focus on the STEM subjects, such as physics, math, or computer science, because that's what I'm most familiar with. This video will be organized as follows. We will review the general application timeline, as well as uh, the main components of your application, pros and cons of doing a PhD. At the end, I'll share a few tips that will hopefully make your PhD application stronger. So why should you listen to me? I'm an incoming applied math PhD student at Harvard, and I have also been admitted to UC Berkeley into their applied math program as well as to UCSD into their computer science program. So I have quite a bit of experience applying to graduate programs last year myself and I have also interviewed dozens of graduate students while I was applying and I have learned a ton so hopefully I'll be able to share some of the things that I learned in this video. So let's start with some basics, the timeline. You usually submit your application around December 15th or at most January 1st. It depends on the school that you're applying and even the program within the school that you're considering. So the deadlines can vary a bit. They can also change if you're applying to fellowships. So usually graduate fellowships have their deadlines much earlier compared to their PG programs. Most have deadlines sometime in October or November. For example, the National Science Foundation Fellowship for grad students, its deadline is sometime in the middle of October. Once you submit your application, you wait a couple of weeks and then sometime towards the end of January, I would say beginning of February, you would receive interview requests if your program conducts interviews. Basically, you'll chat with your prospective PhD advisor about your research interests and your background and some other topics depending on the professor. I would say you should receive your interview notice sometime between January and March, although it might depend on the professor a lot. So for example, one of my professors who was interested in working with had some other personal commitments. He only got to my application towards the end of February, which was pretty late compared to other professors. And many people use this website called Grad Cafe, where people post their PhD results and also whether they received an interview and when they received an interview notice. I've definitely checked this website like a thousand times while I was waiting for my PG admissions results. I don't recommend doing that. Also, some of the information that get posted there is false, so you should take it with a grain of salt. Now let's talk about the main components of a PhD application. There are three main components. One is your recommendation letters, the second one is your transcript, and the third one is your personal slash research statement, or both. It depends on the program. So recommendation letters, you ideally should receive them from your research supervisors. Usually you're supposed to have three letters of recommendation. Ideally they would come from professors who know you really well, that you worked with on a project, but you could also receive a recommendation letter from a professor that you took a class from and you really did well in that class and the professor knows you relatively well and can speak to your academic abilities this can also be fine but the focus is on the research experience the whole point of this application is to show that you are interested in doing research you know how to do research you're good at it and you will be interested in doing research for the next couple of years and more specifically you will be interested in doing research that a particular department that you apply to supports there should be a good research fit in terms of what you want to do, what you've done in the past, and what your prospective research advisor works on. Why should you do a PhD? Let's talk about it. First of all, this is an opportunity for you to learn a particular subfield very deeply and contribute to that field. So if there is some research topic that you're really passionate about and you want to contribute to, doing a PhD might be worthwhile. I also like the flexibility of the schedule that you're going to have in grad school compared to a regular job. So as a graduate student, you have much more flexibility and ownership over how you spend your time, when you work, when you don't work compared to a regular nine to five job. Number two, you should do a PhD if you want to become professor. It's really the pathway to professorship if you want to do that. But also if you don't want to become a professor, it is still valuable in industry if you want to do some advanced work. In my opinion, the third pro of doing a PhD is that you have the opportunity to work with some of the smartest and brightest people in the world who are experts in their field. 
Let's now talk about the cons of doing a PhD. First of all, your stipend is gonna be pretty small. Most top PhDs are fully funded, which means that your studies are covered, like your tuition, and you also get a stipend for living. This stipend pretty much covers your rent and your food and some basic necessities, but not really much more than that. If you're concerned about the stipend, there is also an opportunity to do summer internships, which usually pay relatively high if you do some kind of tech internship, machine learning or software engineering so i wouldn't say that living on a phd stipend is impossible or should stop you from pursuing a phd second point is that phd programs are long so you would be there around five years sometimes a little less sometimes much longer <laughs> so it's a big commitment five years of your life it's definitely something that bothered me when i was applying next con is that you will still be a student a graduate student and which means that you'll still have to take some classes and be in this college environment the next con is that pg studies tend to be lonely and many pg students are depressed the next con is that your research projects will most likely be within the same small subject area when you become immersed in a particular subfield or topic, there aren't that many people that you can talk to about this topic. So for example, if you become really knowledgeable about some topic in mathematics, say knot theory or knot floor homology, there aren't that many mathematicians who are experts in that field. The next point is that you will most likely be overworked and underpaid. <laughs> in many PhD programs, to earn money you have to be a teaching assistant. It might take somewhere between 10 to 20 hours of your time on average. This might take away time from your research. The next con is that in most PhD programs you will have to pass qualifying exams sometimes at the end of your second year it might be very stressful so in some programs you'll have to take actual written exams and in some other programs on the other hand it is much simpler so you might have to only do a presentation about your work and the research that you have done so far some programs also have preliminary exams that you have to take at the beginning of your program those can also be very stressful like for example at UC Berkeley in the most department you have to take written exams some people don't want to study for these exams during the summer before their PhD program because well, it's their summer before therapy program, so they want to rest. So I think you should consider factors like this. The last con, in my opinion, is that there is a lot of politics in academia that you have to deal with. There is some power dynamic in terms of who writes papers, who gets authorship of papers. So for example, maybe you've been working on a paper with your lab mates, maybe you've been contributing a lot and like some other people didn't, and then someone has to decide who will be the first author on the publication. And sometimes it's challenging because having a first author publication is valuable in academia and many people want to have that so there can be a lot of competition and it might be toxic how many programs should you apply to i would say you should apply to somewhere between 8 to 12 programs i applied to 12 programs most of my professors told me to apply to 8 to 10 programs and each application costs around 70 to 100 bucks so if that's not affordable to you you can request a fee waiver either by filling out a form on the program's website or by emailing the program and asking for a fee waiver directly. Yeah, when you're considering the number of PG programs that you want to apply to, there are two different ways to approach this question. So for some people, they have different tiers of school, like schools that you really want to go to and it's really difficult to get into and then there are like some safety programs that maybe you don't want to go to as much but there are still good programs in your field and so some students decide to apply to a range of programs just to make sure they get into at least one. I don't really like this approach even though some of my recommenders told me to follow it but in my opinion if you apply to PG programs you should really only apply to PG programs where you see yourself being in the next five years of your life. If you don't want to live in a certain state for example then don't apply to PG programs in that state. Just save your time and save the time of the professors who will have to read your application. What do you need to get into a good PhD program? Let's start with the basics, the grades. I think you should have good grades, even though they're not as important as your research experience. Still, many professors want to see that you excelled in your academic career and that you can do well in your classes. But the most important thing is, of course, your research experience. Ideally, some publications or conference posters or presentations in your field of interest. The goal is to show that you will be a successful graduate student, which means that you should show that you can write research papers and publish them 
and present them and do all this fun stuff. Speaking of test scores, GREs are no longer required in most programs, in my experience. Some programs still require them. I personally did not take a GRE. Unlike with undergraduate admissions, PG applications are read by professors in your department that you apply to. So there is a committee of professors who sort through the applications and read them. And if you seem qualified, usually they then pass your application to the professor that you mentioned on your application that you want to work with. And then they decide whether they want to have you in their lab. The biggest advice that I can give you when you're applying to PG programs is that you should really look carefully into what faculty work in a particular department at a particular university and you should get to know what they're working on, their research interests very well. When you're applying to PG programs, the fit between your research interests and the interests of your prospective research advisor is extremely important. In conclusion, I would say that you should not do a PhD just because you don't know what else to do. You should do a PhD because you're passionate about research, you've been doing it for a while and you really like it and you want to continue doing it in the future. There are always many other wonderful opportunities and job options that you can consider post-graduation. PhD is just one of them.